Good morning and welcome back Rudy's Resurrection followers. It's been a long time since I put a video out. I think the last video I did was in the fall when I drove the truck up to the um, F100 Super Nationals. Um, it's now June 1st, 2019 um, and I've done quite a bit to the to the truck since then but more importantly I've just been driving the thing. I almost drive it daily um, and just really enjoying the truck. Um, I've done a bunch of little things to the truck um, and I'm going to cover a lot of that stuff in another video but for this video um, what I really want to talk about is um, a door logo. Since I started the build I, I've been thinking about uh, whether or not I wanted to do a, um, a door logo on the truck and which is something you see on a lot of these old you know shop trucks and things like that that people build. Um, a little bit of the backstory <clears throat> on what I've finally decided to do as far as the logo is um, basically a logo um, of the company that um, my grandfather actually worked for, a lot of my relatives worked for, and, and that my dad worked for for over 40 years, um, which is Ashland Oil uh, and Refining Company. And um, uh, I thought that that would be a good tribute. To, to my dad and, and to my grandfather, um, basically the you know um, you don't you don't hear of people working for companies for, for those extended periods of time to basically to support their families, keep a roof over their heads, and food on the table. So um, you know obviously that that uh, means a lot to me and, and to my family. Uh, so this is actually the the logo. Um, uh, actually a, a picture I took of of an old sign that actually my dad has. Um, and I think, you know, as far as the, the appearance and, and the period of that lettering and everything, I think that would be really cool for, uh, for door logos for this truck. Uh, additionally, I've got, a, <clears throat> I've got a, actually the only picture that I have of my grandfather. Uh, here is, uh, he's the gentleman standing over to the right of this image. Um, and actually you can see he's standing right next to an old Diamond Rio pickup truck that has the Ashland Pipelines logo painted on it and this was him with with actually several of my relatives uh, are in this in this picture named in this picture as well um, as they were um, working on the on the pipelines in in eastern Kentucky uh, for the company <clears throat> unfortunately he was he was killed in an explosion uh, sometime in the mid tank explosion sometime in the mid 50s um, when my dad was mid to late 50s I guess my my dad was probably somewhere in, around 10 years old or, or so um, so this video is going to be basically focused on um, how I'm going to complete the door logo so I hope you enjoy again welcome back uh, I know it's been a while and, and like I said I'm going to follow up with a, a later video on just kind of some other little updates on the truck and that kind of thing so We'll get jumped in, jump in and get going. So to get the doors prepped, we're just going to take a little lacquer thinner and just kind of give it a good wipe down. So get any old wax or ribbon compound or anything like that kind of off of, uh, off of the area. So the enamel will have good adhesion. A little bit of color coming off there. So I've got some sketch paper and here's the logo and I've got it perforated so that's what we'll use to to pounce our pattern on there. Uh, but the background is what we're gonna have to paint on first which is a lighter color than the truck. So I've got a cutout of the size uh, of the backing of the logo. So we'll put that on first and then kind of get our Get our lines drawn to be able to, to uh, paint the background first. Um, so I've got a couple, I've got some magnets here that I'm just going to use to kind of hold hold this in place while I get the um, get it taped out or lined out um, for us to be able to to get that painted on. So not sure exactly where it's going to going to go on the door, but I can just use this to kind of go ahead and. And get it in place, hold it in place with a few magnets until I can kind of get back and look at it and say, yeah, that looks like it's a good, you know, good, 
well centered in the door. These little magnets are strong. Oh, there we go. All right, so now that'll allow me to kind of move it around a little bit, to kind of get an idea of where I want it to be. Not too bad right there, actually. All right, so I'm gonna get my tape measure and kind of get, get an idea of you know, how far from the bottom, from the ends of the door, so I can get it, um, get both the logos in the same place on the door. So I've got it about where I want it. It's the same distance from the front of the door edge to the front of the logo, back of the logo to the back door edge, and then from the bottom of the logo down to the bottom of the door because this is basically the, the line of reference I'm going off of. This body line right here is not parallel to the bottom of the door. This line kind of comes down back from the fender hood down and then it kind of rises. I think it kind of rises as it goes back. Um, so if you, if you make it parallel with that then your, your logo is not going to be centered with the bottom of the door. So I've got it kind of basically even on both ends, if you will, from the bottom bottom of the door. So that's about where it's going to be. So I've got a little Stabilo pencil here, just a little erasable pencil, and I'm just going to make a mark at each one of the little corners so I can take this off and then I can put my marking tape on. doesn't have to be super precise. I mean, these old sign painters back in the day, they would have been lettering a truck like this for a company. You know, they were, they took pride in what they did, but it wasn't all completely perfect. I don't want it to be too perfect because it's not going to match the truck. All right. All right, so we'll take our pattern off. Do the same thing on the other side. Oh, these little magnets are tough. Okay. All right, so I've got my marks. I can see those quite well got some 1 8 inch wide mark uh, masking tape or fine line automotive marking tape so we're just going to lay out the line here this stuff is really thin It's hot here today in Alabama. Okay. Right on. It's good. Check my measurements here. All right, good to go. My hired sign painter at work. Good job, Lala. Looking good. So the logo background is done on both sides. I'm going to let that tack up a little bit uh, before I take off that tape. And then I may take a uh, soft cloth and just kind of 
aged it a little bit more uh, if I can. But uh, I like the color. I like how it's uh, come out so far. Okay, it's been a couple weeks, uh, but I'm back working on the logo again for the truck doors. So just to kind of recap on uh, what I've done. So this is the logo. Um, and so this is just a digital, a color printout of a, a digital picture of the sign. Um, so I just took a project, digital projector with my laptop, kind of blew it up on the wall uh, in the house, and then just traced it out onto a piece of um, art paper. And then I took a, um, a little perforating wheel, and I just perforated the lines uh, on the major letters. Um, so then that would allow me to transfer the image on to the, to the door. So I've just got some magnets here. I've got the, the image kind of, uh, or the letters centered on the background, which uh, I've already painted on there in kind of the ivory white. Just got it held on there with some magnets. And then I'm just taking um, some quilt pounce. Actually, this is just a little quilt pounce uh, pad. And I've actually just put some, it's actually blue because these, most of the time they use white for this kind of thing, but, I, but it wasn't gonna show up very well on a light background. So I just used some, um, some marking chalk for my um, woodworking uh, marking line. A little, the little snap line. So I just put the blue in there, and then I just kind of go all over and just pounce this. So that transfers the the chalk kind of through the little perforated area um, onto the door. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see this or not if it's coming out, but if I get up close, you can kind of see. The outline of the letters, the logo. And I've already got the lower letters already painted on because it was a different color. So I've kind of done this in two stage, but the Ashland letters are going to be um, orange. So now just get some paint mixed up and get lettered out. So the paint that I'm using for the orange, or the paint that I'm using for all of it actually, uh, is the one shot. A sign painting enamel um, because in kind of what I've researched on the internet and YouTube this is what most most sign painters use for for lettering pinstriping cars so for the orange I've just got the um, one shot orange 124 L and um, I've just been adding just a little bit of ivory just to dull it out as far as uh, dull the intensity of the color because I'm wanting this to kind of look like it's old and faded obviously and that kind of matches the, the age of the truck. So I'll add just a little bit of ivory um, as well as um, some pounce powder just to dull it because it, um, you don't want it to be too glossy on there either. Um, the other thing that I'm adding is just this 4003 one shot clear which just kind of gives it a little bit more transparent appearance um, where you can actually kind of start to see a little bit of the brush strokes as well and then I'm just using some Chroma Flow 6000 just to thin it out make it flow a little bit better um, just kind of mixing all that up in a little metal can um, I've got my I've just got some brushes just some lettering brushes uh, various sizes thin to a little bit larger um, to use for lettering this out and for this since these letters are fairly large I'm going to use about the largest brush I've got which is just um, a matte quill number 79 extra large and so kind of basically with about two to three strokes on most of these letters it should fill that in. All right, we'll get the paint mixed up. It's starting to get dark on me here, so I've got my um, work light set up. I've also got the uh, picture of the logo kind of just stuck on the side of the truck there with some magnets, just as a reference as I, um, as I letter this out. So I think you can see just fairly faintly those, those lines. And some of the longer straight lines, 
I just used a straight ruler uh, and took a little Stabilo pencil, which is just a water erasable or dissolvable um, pencil and just kind of let it out uh, or just put some straight lines down there as a reference for uh, some of the longer areas. Okay, so I got the orange open and it's not too too bad. It's just a little brighter uh, than the letters there, uh, or at least how I want them to be. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of ivory to kind of dull it out a little bit. But it's not going to take a whole lot of paint, so I'm just going to take a couple spoonfuls. Maybe, yeah, just a couple spoon, spoonfuls here of the orange. All right. And I'm not really even going to take a spoon of the ivory. I'm just going to take a few little drips off, off a tongue depressor. That's probably about all I need right there, just to take a little bit of that brightness out of that. I'll use that stick to mix it up. Oh yeah, that's good, I like that color. It's kind of a dull orange. Um, then I'm gonna bring some of the pounce powder in here. And I added quite a bit to the green, so I'm gonna add kind of quite a bit to this as well, just to kind of dull it out uh, also. Okay. And that kind of thickens it but we'll thin it with the reducer and then we'll add some transparent in here I think we'll be good to go yeah all right so we're gonna get some transparent in here and I'll probably add quite a bit of that because again I want it to be fairly thin kind of translucent have that old kind of appearance to it if I get it too thin I can add uh, add some orange back to it. Gotta be as uh, neat as I can here. Just getting stuff everywhere. Yeah. Not to get too many bubbles in there. Alright, then I'm just going to take, I'm just add a couple spoons of reducer so we get it to flow out well. be a little bit thin. We'll kind of try. Try some. And we can always add a little bit, a little bit back in if we need to. A little bit on the thin side, but again, I want it to kind of flow out kind of thin so we see those brush strokes. All right, let's see how it looks. So my camera battery died last night uh, precisely at the moment that I got my paint mixed so I wasn't able to actually film any of the um, process of painting the, the Ashland lettering but got it done on both sides and um, I think it turned out pretty good. Kind of like the kind of the brush strokes and the vintage kind of appearance of it. So now I've just got to get the, uh, the black kind of the drop uh, coloring or of the lettering or whatever and then outline the small lettering in black and I'll, I think I'm going to put a, an outline all the way around it just to kind of set it off a little bit from the green background of the door uh, and the logos will be done so we'll get that started 
I have the professional at work now. This is what they refer to as a mall stick, M-A-H-L, which kind of helps you kind of get, get some stability somewhere to rest your, your hand where a lot of sign painters use. Okay, we got the logos all finished up on the doors. I think they turned out great. I like the weather look, uh, the kind of the faded aged lettering where you kind of see the brush strokes and everything. So I think it really matches the truck well. There's the driver's side. We'll show you the passenger door real quick. And the areas where there was some original scratches kind of underneath where I painted the logo. I kind of came back just with a little Dremel and just kind of took the took the paint off of, uh, in those areas as well. So again, just kind of giving it the appearance that it's been on there shortly after the truck was built. All right, well, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode. Be safe out there. Talk to you later.